Hello and welcome to Lesson 4B of the Ecological Design Modeling Series. This is a lesson on how to simulate tank using the spreadsheet software Microsoft Excel. So what we see here before us is the components of the spreadsheet that we need to simulate the model tank. We have here the diagram that represents the model tank. In this case, we have an inflow J, a storage Q, and an outflow J1. Note that this is slightly different nomenclature from the model we used in lesson 4A. However, the structure is the same. And we're actually going to assume the same equations, which we see here in step one, write the equations. So the difference equation that we're going to use to simulate is that dq dt equals j minus k1q. The second step is to do the calibration. So here we have calibration values for the inflow j coming into our storage, the outflow j1 leaving our storage, and the value of Q itself, in this case 1000. So we can see in the spreadsheets we've typed these values in. And if we look up here formula bar, we can see the value 5 has been typed in. Same with the value of 3 and the value of Q equaling 1000. Now we come down to K1 and we've actually written an equation. So we've solved for K1 because we know that J1 equals K1Q. Solving for K1, we can see that K1 equals J1 over Q. And 1,000 divided by, or 3 divided by 1,000, J1 divided by 1,000 here, E5 divided by E6, using the cell notation for spreadsheet software. 0.03 and this is going to be a constant throughout the model so this is calculated once this is very important to note that it's not calculated again during the simulation step three is to pick initial values note that the initial values are not the same as the calibration values the calibration values were simply used to calculate the value for k1 that's done before the simulation and is done only one time the initial values are what the values are of the flow, the inflow, or any constants, and the initial value of the storage Q. So in this case, the initial value of Q is 100. The initial inflow is 5. We could change this to whatever we want and run the model, but we're not changing K1. In this case, our time step for DT is a value of 1. Step four, the simulation itself. So this should look like the hand-drawn simulation that we did in lesson 4a. We have time, a column for time. <coughs> we have a column for the source, in this case J. We have a column for Q, the storage. A column for the outflow, J1. And then we need to calculate DQ, so we have a column for calculating DQ. What we do is we can click on these cells and see what's inside them by looking at what's in the formula bar. So times zero, the value of j is five. We're assuming that the inflow is a constant value of five and it's not going to change. Q, our initial value of Q, refers back to cell B10 because that's the value we wanted to start with. J1 is K1Q. If we click on the formula bar, we note that it's K1, which is in the E8 cell, times the value of Q at time 0, which was in the C17 cell. Also note that we're using dollar signs in front of the E and the 8, so that the value of 0 .003 in that cell is used when we copy it down. Finally, dq is j minus j1 times dt. 
we can see that here, cell B17 minus cell D17, all that times DT, which is in B12. Again, if there's one place where DT exists, which is in cell B12, so we need to use the dollar signs so that when we copy this formula down for more rows to represent more time, it doesn't move. And we can look down and see, if we note the formula bar up here, it's just changing the cells. So if we come maybe down to time day nine, we can see that <coughs> J and J1 are still with time day nine, but DT is with this cell up here. The same would hold true for this equation for J1. It's always using K1 up here in the E8 cell, but it's adjusting for which Q it uses, using the one of that to represent that day. We should also note that the equation for Q is just simply adding the previous value of Q. So in this in day one, it's the value at time day zero plus the change, dq. So 100 plus 4.7 is 104.7. We come down again to day nine, double check to make sure that we are adding correctly. Yes, we're adding day eight, value of q, plus the change for that day. So 137.21 plus 4.59 gives us the value of 141.8. And we can see our cell addresses up here in the formula bar if we want to do it that way. So basically what we've done, once we get the equation in the, for each column in place, we can just simply click and drag it down. Or we could copy and paste. I've also put in this freeze here. Uh, so we can always see what's in the, the uh, columns. Finally, what we have is we're a plot, a graph of what we're interested in and understanding in our model. So in this case, we're plotting J, Q, and J1 as a function of time. And I've color-coded it in this case so it corresponds to the colors in the headings. So J is five, it's a flow, and it's not changing, so it's a straight line. Storage is green, it's on the storage axis on the right hand side. If we put our cursor on top of Q or the green line, we can see that at time zero, it's 100. If we came up to say day 54, we can see that it's 334. And likewise, day 111, 544. We're also plotting the flow, and again, the flow is on the left graph. So what we notice is that while the inflow is constant, the outflow is increasing. And it's increasing because Q is increasing. We're accumulating material in Q. Q is growing, therefore it's increasing the outflow. So by time 120, it still is far from catching up with the inflow. But if we want to expand this graph out to its maximum, now we're ready to ask some what if questions. One of the first things we could do is to see what happens if we change the initial value of Q currently at 100. What if we change this to 900. Go to that cell, type in 900, hit enter, and what do we see? It now starts, which is the green, storage is green, starts out at 900 and goes towards 1400. The outflow still has not reached the inflow. We 
we could also change the inflow. What if the inflow was only three? Now we can see that the outflow starts at 900 and goes to 960. Before it was going towards 14, J was five. So changing that back to five, we can see it's approaching 1400. At three, it's approaching 960. So with less inflow, Q grows more slowly and to a lower value within this number of days. So by changing the initial values of either Q or J, I'm assuming that the basic structure of the model and the calibration coefficients still hold true under these initial values. If I were to find new information about my model and think that I need to recalibrate it, Maybe I learn new information that says that when the value of Q is 1,000, the outflow is not 3, as we assumed here, but maybe it's 5. So I could go back to my calibration section of the model and type in 5 for J1. That recalculates K1. Now it's 0 0.005. Now, what has that done? You can think of K1 as a valve that controls the outflow J1. The larger the valve, the more flow. The larger K1, the more flow. So in this case, by increasing the flow or changing the size of the valve to make it larger, we're allowing more to flow out. 